Introducing Under Armour's Infinity High Sports Bra. Its ergonomic design is molded to support the natural movement of your body. With cord out padding, the better breathability eliminates extra bulk without sacrificing support. And quick dry padding is Under Armour's fastest drying padding yet. When you're lifting heavy, running fast, and pushing yourself further than ever before, you need a bra that will help you go that extra mile and make you feel your best. Shop the Infinity High Sports Bra now at UA.com. You're listening to a Count Out Podcast. Hey everybody, it's Amanda and I'm Ashley and this is how to talk to your friend about wrestling 66 (gasps) spooky yeah (laughs) it's not spooky (laughs) I was dude okay here's how dumb I am I was trying to figure out a way to make it a 666 thing especially considering what we're doing this week but alas nothing no just Let's missing just, one. We're just missing a six. If it was on, if it was in June, we would have had our third six. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, spooky. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> um, I've been wanting to do this one for a minute, so I'm pretty fucking stoked about it. That this is it, our episode that keeps getting moved. <laughs> Seriously, we moved this episode so many times. <laughs> and I waited to listen to what I needed to listen to until we were going to cover it because I didn't want to like have it and then lose it. Yeah. So do we want to do pleasantries? I mean, we kind of did that before we were. Oh my God. We were just laughing so hard. I can't even, I'm not even going to try to do it, <laughs> but um, yeah. Okay. Just- I'm just gonna say it. We love Mance Warner in this house. Yeah. Especially for the giggle he just gave us. Seriously. Just uh, you know, both me and Amanda are having a rough day. So um thank you, Mance, for just cheering us up a little bit. <laughs> I swear I will share on Twitter what we're laughing so fucking hard. <sighs> Because it's so good. Yeah. And it's so dumb. It's nothing amazing, guys, but it's fucking funny for whatever reason. It's for- one of the stupidest things ever, but it's just, it's Brett Lauderdale yelling at Mance for breaking chairs and <laughs> Mance screaming at him that he didn't break any of them. And it's the most beautiful, wonderful thing ever. And I think the thing that's making me laugh is I just keep talking like him. Oh my God. It's so good. And You're made. It's- impressions pretty good <laughs> I won't make deep... you no I'm I'm too embarrassed but he has the deepest voice and it's just so fun to do anyway um I we're we're talking about some heavy kind of heavy stuff today but um it's different it's different from the usual this is like a mashup of two of our favorite things yes murder <laughs> murder and wrestling yeah and and wrestling and luchadors um i just want to say that i looked on uh, murderpedia for some more information and there's a photo gallery <laughs> on murderpedia oh and it just says um victim very graphic very graphic on each photo and i'm like i'm not gonna click those oh i want to see it I will I could, let you see them, but I'm not going to click that. Murderpedia. Sorry. Give me one second because I have to see this because murder, Murderpedia was blocked on my work computer. Well, I wonder <laughs> and, why. Oh, yeah. I can only imagine. And then on top of that, um, uh, male murderers. I don't care about the female. That's what I want. Does it go by first name? Oh, here. I can just send it to you. Oh, I think it goes by last name. Okay, so then she's oh here. Uh, she's a B. Okay, so we're gonna talk about there you go. 
Juana Barraza. She is a female luchador. Okay, so I will say this. The only thing that kind of pissed me off about all of this is that there was very, very little information about her actual wrestling career. And that bummed me out. I'm not seeing your very, very graphic thing. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now. I just opened up the entire photo gallery. I'm not seeing anything graphic. Okay, I'm still not going to click it. (laughs) Don't do it, but... Oh, here. I mean, it's the dead bodies. Oh, that one's a smidge graphic. I mean... Okay, well, one of them, they show you the goddamn body when it's on the table, which seems like Uh... an autopsy table. So, like, we don't need to see that. But overall they're like there's only one that's really that graphic which the one that's really that graphic is the one that like she she legitimately killed um okay sorry Juana Barraza is who we are covering today she was a female luchador turned serial killer um she's maybe me yeah depending on what you believe (laughs) she maybe is a serial killer or maybe she just murdered one person and that's it like yeah um i would say a lot of the information but that's not true like all of the information came from episode 478 of last podcast on the left yeah we had a Uh, fun little listening party and uh got some information from them and then also i i did read some stuff on murderpedia as well i went on a buttload of different websites looking for wrestling information and all anybody wanted to talk about was fucking killing yeah (laughs) i was trying to find out more about her wrestling stuff too and it's like uh, the only thing that i saw was like she had um she they kept saying she was obsessed with it when she was younger yeah and that um there was something about titanic mock battles but i think that the wording is weird probably it got translated funky. yeah and it was like because that's not what <laughs> luchadors are no <laughs> i don't know why the word titanic was in there but it was just very interesting that that was yeah anyway the translation was very strange i'm just gonna like write her a letter and ask her to tell us more about her luchador stuff because yeah I think it's bullshit that's not in there <laughs> she had i thought both of her luchador names were actually fucking cool yes well her, in the language yeah so her first one was the little star yes but it was like it's Estreita or something yeah something like that wrong and i apologize Um, and then second one was la dama del silencio the silent lady so good and she was totally like a heel yeah they call it a ruda yeah i thought that was so rad but like according to last podcast which i'm gonna take every word they say as a fucking what's it called gospel gospel because marcus is a freak and he (laughs) he fucking researches everything well i thought it was really interesting too that his his wife helped him so much on this and she translated like a lot of it so um that's fucking cool well and she's from i don't know if she's from mexico exactly but like she speaks the language fluently and stuff so like she translated the biography or whatever it was that they found online and yeah because yeah. there's only one that they could find, um, which is crazy because the story is so like they, they keep saying on that episode as well. If you can go listen to the episode, I mean, yeah. there is if you want to super, super in, in depth, they go back through the history of like serial killers in Mexico because it wasn't a very prominent thing. But um, her story is, um, I think. Uh, Henry kept saying it that her story should be made into a movie. There's a whole lot of like, there is so much that I don't understand why this this hasn't been a bigger story. 
Yeah, because if you look on Wikipedia, um, as far as portrayals in media, um, there's been a couple things in like the Spanish media. There's yeah. a, a Deadly Women episode, an episode of Criminal Minds, and this episode of Last Podcast, and that's it. That's it. Yeah, I don't understand. Because it's I- so insane. Like she had such a fucked life from this from the fucking jump. Okay, so briefly, briefly, she was born in December, December 27th, 1957, to a cop and a prostitute. Classic parents. Classic. The mom leaves the cop, which I didn't realize they were like together together, but I guess she leaves him to go shack up with a married man. Also, she was one of... 35 kids yeah that's right from the dad so nuts no i thought the dad was a truck driver i don't know and everything that i was seeing online it said the dad was a cop oh they said that the dad was a truck driver so maybe he was a truck driver i believe marcus over fucking anything i found on the internet (laughs) we believe marcus parks in this house (laughs) Marcus Parks is always right in this house (laughs) yeah but in any case her mom leaves the biological dad and goes and shacks up with a married dude that becomes stepdad and I guess stepdad was like decent but mom was a fucking fucked her mom I don't even understand I don't even understand and I'm like part of me is like okay given the timeline like it's the late 50s early 60s abortion is not a thing that we do given the religious area probably catholic i have to imagine that's like a no-go for sure but like stop having babies woman stop having babies yeah yeah it's bad and then at like the age of 12 she trades wanna for three beers yeah which isn't even like a fucking trade. It's just like, hey, I don't <laughs> like, like my fucking kid. Like, just take her. She she trades her for three beers to a dude who was like her a sibling's friend that they find out. Yeah. So it was like a sibling's friend. Um, and then like he fucking treats her like basically like a fucking sex slave. And then the mo- they're that person's mom finds out and then the mom's like beats the shit out of the sign but not because it was bad but because like they were gonna get in trouble yeah she just she didn't know that in, she didn't know that there was a trade that happened so she wasn't mad about what was going on no not she at all mad because she thought he just like took her so as soon as she found out it was a trade it was like oh it's cool beans she can do my laundry yeah and then and then like continued on for like another year or four depending on what you read (laughs) or four yeah that itself is insane that's one of the things I'm struggling with too it's like nothing was truly nailed down in this chick's story as far as like length of time of anything no but her stepdad found out about it got her out of there with the help of like her grandparents or something or aunt and an uncle i can't remember what it was it some was, other stuff well, yeah some other family members um got her out of there and then the fucking stepdad beat the shit out of the mom for like selling her for beer which Under- is like not like, a good thing either yeah there's a lot of like domestic violence happening in these stories but like <laughs> fuck man um there's a lot of shit happening in this story so oh and yeah. then mom dies mom fucking dies of cirrhosis of the liver at like 36 i think that's what they said that is insanely young to die of cirrhosis of the liver like you have had to been drinking a lot yeah. a lot a lot yeah mm-hmm. like bottles of, of and bottles of booze <laughs> no water at no, all no no water <laughs> there was no water you were 100 filtrating out alcohol at that point yeah you were 
you were just booze at that point. Um, mm-hmm. And then she said, like, she had absolutely no remorse for her mother's death at all. Which, understandable, doesn't sound like they had much of a relationship. Yeah. But at, I think it was at 18, she um, became, well, she kind of was always obsessed with luchadors, but at 18 is when she started training. Mm-hmm. And I guess she trained in, like, thought a bunch of fairly fucking well-known ones. Yeah, she didn't have her first match until she was 22. Yeah, because they make you go through, like, an apprenticeship out there. Yeah, and then basically, I guess, I didn't know this. Um, it, It's interesting. I get, I would love to read some more stuff about maybe the history of, like, luchadors um because it, it was really interesting but um i apparently maybe it's just back in the day i don't think it would be necessarily the case now but who knows um your first match is more like a hazing yeah <laughs> and so she got the shit beat out of her but she did get money too so she was like stoked because she got she got a fair amount she got like i don't know 20 20 or so bucks for the match And then she started getting better and better and she was afraid of heights. But at the same time, she like she liked the adrenaline rush. So she was like, I can make money doing this. And she would fight several times during the night. So they said at the at her peak, she was making like a thousand dollars or more a night. So like, fuck, yeah, she was she couldn't have been that bad. She got a belt. Yeah. But there was also that weird thing that um, that they mentioned later, too, where so her career kind of fizzled out around her like late 30s, early 40s because of a back injury. Yeah. So she she did stop. But when all of the other stuff happened that we'll talk, we'll touch on in a second, um, when all of the other stuff happened, no one really came to her defense but also no one really named her as being a bad person either which is really weird and so I I thought that part was very strange yeah it just like it was just radio silence yeah like no one had anything to say at all like we're not gonna say anything good but we're not gonna say anything bad There wasn't even anybody that was like, oh, I'm shocked about this information. Like, people just didn't say anything. (laughs) Underdog Fantasy is the fastest growing fantasy app and easiest place to play fantasy sports. Just jump on underdogfantasy.com or download the app, draft your team, and that's it. And if drafts aren't your thing, they also have a pick'em game where you can win 20 times your money in a single night. Use promo code radio and underdog will double your first deposit when you sign up with up to $100 in bonus cash. Deposit $100, get $100 free. That's promo code radio. Terms and conditions apply. Only at Metro by T-Mobile, you can upgrade to 5G and get more savings with the lowest price on one line of unlimited 5G. Just $40, period. That's it. Taxes and fees included. Plus, more choices with the largest selection of free 5G phones from brands you love, like Samsung. Switch and save more. Only at Metro. Lowest price versus major national prepaid brands. The fraction of users greater than 35 gigabytes per month may notice reduced speeds, and Metro customers may notice reduced speeds versus T-Mobile due to prioritization. Video streams and SD requires eligible port in and plan. See store for details. I wonder if it's just more like um like Ben Kissel had said where it's like kind of keeping kayfabe a little bit mm, yeah he did well and that would make sense for Kissel to say because Kissel watched wrestling <laughs> exactly um yeah so kind of keeping kayfabe where it's like oh we don't know like we only know the silent lady you know I mean that makes sense. Well, and they take K- I not that I mean, I feel like they take kayfabe a lot more serious than we do because luchas will wear their fucking masks to formal events and shit. No one so, knows and there's certain people that no one know no one knows yeah. who they look like or what they look like or you yeah. know. Yeah. So I don't know. I feel like maybe there's something to that. That could be. And who knows? It could be like a cultural thing where like keep your fucking mouth shut if you don't know anything about it. Very true. Very true. Like that's not my business. I'm not going to put my foot in that business. Americans don't have that problem. Our fucking 
are fucking we are in everybody's business snitches get <laughs> stitches <laughs> they take that shit serious <laughs> um yeah i was bummed that like there wasn't more information about her wrestling career i mean there's there's pictures of her in her wrestling outfit for the silent lady yeah um, and then she got a belt of some sort because there's photos of her with a belt mm. and then she got the back injury so she was out and then they said that they that she worked as like a promoter for a minute which you and then they said that she made more money as a promoter than she did as a wrestler which yeah <laughs> like, like <laughs> jesus um oh. so i i don't know it's it's very interesting this is where the story gets kind of weird and um <laughs> you know <laughs> So then I'm just going to come out and say, so then at a certain point in time, she decides to go fucking, depending on what you believe. Yeah. Asterisks, depending on what you believe. Um, she goes on a fucking like murderous rampage on a bunch of old women. But yeah, it's not even okay. I don't want to say it's not brutal because it is brutal and I apologize for the victims, but like she's not um, murdering them in cold blood with knives and guns and things. She's strangling them and supposedly she's strangling them with like all kinds of weird shit tights um stethoscopes yeah i just Just like i really remember the stethoscope yeah because it's such a one well okay so like henry was saying for a second it's not that weird if she's pretending to be a nurse which supposedly that was the whole thing like she and another gal would dress up like a nurse so that they could get into the homes Mm -hmm. and then they would strangle the ladies and take all their shit right but i don't know depending on who you believe of the last podcast dudes like everybody had a different scenario (laughs) yeah they were really like torn on very different things henry seemed to believe that she totally did kill all of these older ladies and then Marcus was like, well, but there was other things going on. I think Henry believes the worst in people, though. <laughs> I mean, I don't think you're wrong about that. Whereas Marcus is like, well, but what about this theory? And what about this fucking theory? And then, like, he even brought up some really sound political shit where there was a specific person running for office and he had created the program that supposedly she, Juana, was mm-hmm. using to get into these houses so he caught her and stopped all of the fucking killing and she didn't get caught until like 2006 so she was an older woman killing like elderly women yeah killing litas grandmas little grandmas my favorite part is her nickname her serial killer nickname was and i'm gonna fuck this up so bad and i apologize i've been trying to practice saying it all day uh la mata viejitas Mm -hmm. little old lady killer (laughs) which like translated it's horrible but when you say it in the language it's beautiful and last podcast does a way better job of explaining the history of um serial killers in uh mexico and why this is technically considered mexico's first actual serial not actual serial killer but like I guess tried yeah this one was like the first one tried as a serial killer because Mexico didn't have serial killer problems that was an American thing yeah and like that was just this gross American thing because why would anyone do that like that's that's a very disrespectful thing people don't kill for sport (laughs) I guess they also like here's the part that kind of shocked me is there were eyewitnesses saying that they had seen Juana coming out of these old ladies' apartments and they still thought that it had to be a male serial killer that was fucked up in the head, as they put it, fucked up in the head um, and cross-dressing to pose as a woman yeah, to evade the police. Like, I don't even... This is 2006, too. Yeah, this isn't even a long time ago. This is 2006. And And they were so hellbent on this that they even had, like, the weird thing to me is, like, they had those people from France come over. Yeah. They were like, no, you need to ask the eyewitnesses. And they're like, no, it's a (laughs) cross-dresser. Dude, 
Well, and I'm like, um, I mean, I'm just going to throw this out there, but if this is like an American problem, <laughs> why did you bring in the French? 64 different fucking like character drawings or something that they had. 64 character drawings. Yeah. And like, they're just still like, mm, there was it's a cross dresser. It's a man. <laughs> And she looks, here's my favorite part, is she totally looks like one of the character sketches. And then Ben goes, well, yeah, there was 64 of them. I look like one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, my God. But, like, it makes sense. Like, yeah, if there's 64 character sketches. Like, I'm going to fucking look like one of them. Yeah. It's Apparently, they said that she w- she had, they had fingerprint evidence to link her to at least 10 of the murders. But if you listen to what she says when she's taken into custody, yeah. Juana says something about like, no, they sat me down and they made me touch all these things. But yeah. I really use them. There's that. There's the fact that she couldn't actually read. Oh, yeah. That was like a big one. So it was like, how do you have all of these client card informations from this thing if you can't read? And then her accomplice was like, oh, well, I was like this part of it. She was this part of it. But then, you know, nothing really happened. Did anything really happen to the accomplice? No, because supposedly she was in for a different murder and some other jazz. And so since she folded on Juana, she got let go. Mm. So, So I mean. That's that's the thing is like it's very touchy because I, it definitely seemed like they wanted to pin so much on her, and I mean well, she got like seven hundred and she seven hundred sixty nine years is what yeah. she was with or something crazy like that. And then one of the things Marcus brought up that I thought was so fucking crazy was the murders had stopped like four or five years before she was caught. Yeah. So like. I mean, serial killers totally take breaks. We are well aware of that. And I mean, sometimes it's a month break and sometimes it's seven years. Yeah. But it did seem crazy that like it had stopped and they're still pinning all of it on her. It had stopped and then they, they, they pinned that last one on her because they caught her running out of the apartment of the, of the lady (laughs) because the guy, there was a person who was at the at the lady's house or something yeah it's mm, it's all very suspicious it is and you know it's one of those things that we'll never know that we you know might never know the truth because there are two sides to every story three sides to every story (laughs) I just want to know more about the wrestling. I want to know more about the wrestling too. I'm really sad there was not a match somewhere. Like I wanted to find a match. I wanted to know what title she held. The only information I gathered was that she fought. There was some wrestler named, go figure, Charlie Manson. And she, I guess, really adored him and wrestled him. Holy shit. And then there was another like fairly well-known wrestler within that community that she wrestled and stuff. But like from everything that I could gather from the wrestling career was yeah. just the her, audience liked her. Her fucking outfit was so badass. She looks like the pink Power Ranger with a butterfly on her face. She does look pretty badass. It was sick. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to know more about the wrestling. And I tried to like not dude you can't look up this name without finding everything about the murders yeah i mean i i was able to find like exactly what you found which was her her outfit her her with the belt but i would love to know more about the fucking wrestling i mean that's what we're here for people this is not a true crime podcast we're here to talk about wrestling yeah and i was i was bummed but i think that um oh there's ah the crime scene photos ah <laughs> stop clicking Sorry. the button don't click the button i didn't click it on the thing i clicked on google images it betrayed me <laughs> it betrayed me <laughs> oh my gosh oh my gosh i just wanted to find a match i didn't have it they didn't have anything i was bummed 
Like I was really hoping for at least like a clip of a match. <gasps> oh wait, wait. <gasps> Did you? I no maybe. What the fuck is this? Oh, this is some opera. Damn it! What the hell? It looked like a match. Yeah, it's not. God damn it! It had a link that looked like a picture of a match with a lady in it. Oh, but it turned out it was something else. That's stupid. Yeah. How dare you fuck us like that, Google? Yeah. Dicks. My bad. I can't believe I had to see crime scene photos. I I'm, hate crime scene photos. I'm sorry you had to see that. Google betrayed you completely. <sighs> I apologize. I've only ever seen crime scene photos from like James Dean's car accident. And there was a book that was like 20s through 40s la mm. and it was the photos from there and that was kind of cool but like i don't like it <laughs> i have seen a lot more crime scene photos than you have <laughs> well i know that's why i never wanted to go to the museum of death because like <sighs> it's a lot of crime scene photos okay the museum of death is fucking crazy um like i know it's a museum and they don't do this there but i continue to walk around i've been there multiple times now and i every time continue to walk around with the fucking weird creeped out feeling that somebody is going to jump out and scare me yeah that's why i don't like it it's never happened nobody has ever jumped out at me and i've been there multiple times but i just like keep waiting for some dickhead to be behind a wall that i walk behind and like that's how it's gonna happen (laughs) this is how you get me i do want to go to um that other place the mystic museum yes i so want to do that also it's all 90s slashers mm-hmm. let's go okay i I'm mean scared. i do for- <laughs> it's not it's scary i'll take you for your birthday let's go we're playing okay, we're, we're doing it i have uh, to get back from hawaii first but yeah obviously okay oh yeah so, i'm going to hawaii ashley's going to hawaii that will not interrupt any of our services no it will not <laughs> it will be fine everyone don't worry don't freak out everything's fine <laughs> i'm not gonna do what you think i'm gonna do freak out <laughs> as i'm wearing a tie-dye t-shirt <laughs> fucking hell <sighs> okay so that is like the briefest snippet of a story about juana barraza the supposed luchador killer just go listen to the last podcast on the left. Um, yeah. Episode it, 478. Well, that was just our synopsis of that um, because we wanted to talk about it. Um, and honestly, we thought we'd find more ab- information about the wrestling in there. Is I really thought we were going to find more wrestling information. I'm like, going to dig around. Maybe I'll find something. But um, yes. Yeah. Oh. Also, thank you, Scott, for telling me about this episode because I had no fucking idea about any of this until he told me. So that was thank you, Scott. That was awesome. Thank you very much. Shout Um, out to Scott. (laughs) If we find any more information about her wrestling career, we will be sure to share it with you because I'm as interested as I am. I just I have so many fucking questions now. Seriously. Come on, God, give us a movie already, but with the facts and more wrestling. Yes. (laughs) That's it for today. Drink water, take your vitamins, leave your strong friends alone for the day, maybe. I don't know. That's what I Yeah, I was in a really bad mood, but that just go watch that man's warner clip, man. It's (laughs) really funny. (laughs) Bro, from now on, that's just gonna be the fucking mood upper i'm just gonna send you mance warner clips i didn't bring any of them (laughs) the the best is the second clip with him and matthew justice fucking checking all the chairs just (laughs) sitting on all the chairs oh a quick congratulations to ryan and his girlfriend jesse yeah, they got engaged over the weekend. Woo! So yeah, our podcast network dude Ryan fucking got engaged. Congratulations! There's still love in the world. Yes, love Not- does exist. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
<laughs> okay. Go tell somebody you love them. Drink your water. Um, uh, you can find us. <laughs> that's right. Oh, are we gonna trade today? Oh, you can find us on Twitter at HTTW Pod or on Instagram at How to Talk Wrestling Pod. And you can buy t shirts and stickers and other stuff at how to talk to your friend about wrestling.bigcartel.com. Woo! We did it. We <laughs> traded. <laughs> traded spots and we still crushed it. <laughs> what the heck? Okay. That's um everything. And have a good week. We're losing our fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go eat something and finish my taxes. <laughs> I'm gonna go eat my spicy soup. I'm so oh my- excited. <laughs> Okay, enjoy your spicy soup. I love Enjoy you your taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. This has been a Count Out Podcast. Hi, guys. This is Lauren, your proud host of Your Dose of Death. Just give me a little quick tune in to make sure to listen to Your Dose of Death. Each and every single episode, I provide a different lens into the world of deathmatch, whether it be wrestlers, content creators, or anyone in between. Make sure to listen to me each and every single episode to get a different lens into the death. And please, make sure to listen to your dose of death. Underdog Fantasy is the fastest growing fantasy app and easiest place to play fantasy sports. Just jump on underdogfantasy.com or download the app, draft your team, and that's it. And if drafts aren't your thing, they also have a pick'em game where you can win 20 times your money in a single night. Use promo code RADIO, and Underdog will double your first deposit when you sign up with up to $100 in bonus cash. Deposit $100? Get $100 free. That's promo code RADIO. Terms and conditions apply. Only at Metro by T-Mobile, you can upgrade to 5G and get more savings with the lowest price on one line of unlimited 5G. Just $40, period. That's it. Taxes and fees included. Plus, more choices with the largest selection of free 5G phones from brands you love, like Samsung. Switch and save more. Only at Metro. Lowest price versus major national prepaid brands. The fraction of users greater than 35 gigabytes per month may notice reduced speeds, and Metro customers may notice reduced speeds versus T-Mobile due to prioritization. Video streams and SD requires eligible port in and plans. See store for details.